Hi, I'm Anne Marie with Speak Confident English, and welcome to this week's newest lesson. This is, of course, where you want to be every week if your goal is to communicate with confidence. This week, we're focused on five mistakes you might be making. And if you are, they can hurt your fluency and your confidence in English. So, of course, we want to stop making those mistakes and we want to do something a little bit different so that you can start making progress. So if you feel like you are doing everything right, you are practicing grammar and trying to learn new vocabulary, maybe you're listening to podcasts and reading English online, you're reading newspapers, watching movies and TV shows. If you're doing all those things and nothing is working, or maybe you really want to be fluent in English, but you just can't find the time right now. Or you're worried that maybe you're just not good at learning English. You just can't be fluent. You're never going to be confident like someone else. If any of those sound like you, then today's lesson is 100% for you because you might be making some mistakes that make you feel that way. And the truth is you can absolutely become fluent and confident in English. This is what I do every day. And I work with students who, like you, felt that it was impossible. They thought they were doing everything right and nothing was working for them. Now, before we get started with the first mistake you might be making, I want to tell you that today's lesson might include a little bit of tough love. When we talk about giving someone tough love in English, what we mean is that we might say or do something that seems strict or too strong. Maybe it's harsh. It's something you don't want to hear, but we say it because we want to help you. I'm going to say some things because I want to see you succeed. I don't want you to stay stuck. I don't want you to feel frustrated. I don't want you to give up on English. I want you to be successful. So I'm going to share a little bit of tough love with you, but I'm also going to help you find solutions so that you can stop making these mistakes and start making real progress. Mistake number one is doing the same old thing again and again in English. And when I say same old thing, what I mean is that you're doing the same things you did when you first started to learn English. You probably started with a grammar book in a classroom and you did grammar activities, you learned rules, and you memorized lists of words. All of those things are great as a beginner English learner. You have to create a foundation. Of course, you need to understand grammar rules and you need vocabulary to get started. But as you make progress, as you advance, you need to change how you learn and use English. If your goal is fluency and confidence, those don't come from a grammar book and they don't come from memorizing lists of words. I get a lot of emails with questions like, Amory, do you have a grammar book to recommend to help me speak English better? Or Amory, what vocabulary do I need to speak fluently? And the truth is it's not grammar or vocabulary. It is speaking and practice speaking that will help you become fluent and confident. So if you're waiting to buy the new best grammar book, or if you're wondering what vocabulary to learn so that you can communicate fluently, I want to tell you that the real answer is learning to use English. So let's try a new way to do that. The first thing I want you to do is put away your grammar book. Yes, grammar is important, but we're going to start looking at how grammar is used in real life. So what I would recommend is that you choose a blog that you're interested in reading in English or listen to a podcast. If you need help, I have a great lesson on 11 fantastic podcasts to listen to in English. 
So the first step is choosing something to read or listen to in English, and that will help you see how we use grammar in real life. And then the next step, the more important step, is talk about it. You can talk about it with a friend or maybe someone that you work with. Or if you have no one to practice with, you can even practice by yourself. In fact, right now I have a free audio training that you can download where I share three strategies to develop the courage and confidence to say what you want in English. And in those strategies, I talk about things that you can do on your own to practice speaking. So you can use those to help you begin to use English in your real life. You're improving your listening, your reading, you're learning to understand how we use grammar and vocabulary in real life, and then you're immediately speaking. You're practicing it, you're using it, and that's how you begin to make progress on your fluency and confidence. Mistake number two is closely related. It's I'm doing everything but nothing is working. So maybe you are already reading blogs in English and you're listening to podcasts, you watch movies and TV shows, you read newspapers, and yes, you still do grammar activities and vocabulary activities. You're doing everything, but nothing is working. I get so many emails and questions about this because it's really frustrating to spend a lot of time on English and then still feel nervous and shy or worried when you speak. When I get questions like this, I often say, you are doing everything, but are you speaking? One of the things I notice when I see lists of everything you're doing, there's one thing that's missing. It's speaking. I don't see anything like I'm speaking with my friends at work or I practice speaking at lunch every day with my colleagues. And that is the key. All of those other things are fantastic and they are absolutely essential to helping you improve your listening, your reading skills, growing your vocabulary, learning how native speakers communicate and different accents and pronunciation. But if you're not speaking, you can't grow your fluency and build your confidence. I want to use an example for you. Think about when you first learned to ride a bike. You probably didn't read a lot of books about riding a bike. You probably didn't learn all the rules of a bike or the mechanics of how a bike works. You didn't watch other people and then immediately get on a bike and ride it successfully. Instead, one day someone helped you get on a bike and you were probably super nervous. If you were like me, you were off balance and you immediately fell over. And maybe that fall was painful and you thought, why am I doing this? It's crazy. But you really wanted to learn to ride a bike. Someone was there to help you. They picked you up. They encouraged you, supported you. So you got on the bike again. You tried it. You did it. You moved your legs and you balanced on the bike. Maybe you fell again and each time it was less painful, less difficult, and it was easier to keep going forward. That is exactly how fluency works, and that is what happens when you begin practicing speaking. It is hard at first, it's challenging, and you might make some mistakes, but it's important to keep going forward, and the key is that you're speaking. Now, if you are a really shy and nervous English speaker, this is the hardest part. The idea of making a mistake is terrifying. It's the one thing you don't want to do. So what I recommend is that you make sure you find someone, a friend, a colleague, a teacher that you are comfortable with, someone that makes you feel comfortable, that supports you and helps you go forward. That is who you want to practice speaking with. Now you might think, Anne-Marie, this all sounds great, but I have no one to practice with. No one near me speaks English. There are a couple of suggestions that I have for you. One, you could try to find a language partner online. 
It is a challenge to do that, but there are many websites. Or you could try something like meetup.com, which is a place where people who have similar interests get together and maybe there is an English speaking group near you. If you're not ready to practice speaking with someone, you can do some activities on your own that will help you make progress. Again, I have that free download that you can listen to and learn those strategies that you can work on by yourself and still make progress in your fluency and confidence. And my third recommendation is invest in yourself, invest in your English. If it's important to you, if you have a dream that you want to accomplish and you need English to do that, invest in it. Find a teacher, a class that you can take that will give you the speaking practice that you need. Not another grammar class, not a bunch of vocabulary. You need someone that is going to give you speaking and feedback. In fact, that is exactly what my Fluency School course is all about. Fluency School was specifically designed for shy English speakers who want to practice speaking and who want to do it in a really friendly, supportive, and motivating community. So if it's important to you, then investing in what you want is also a fantastic option. The third mistake that I often see is focusing on the negative, believing that you can't. When nothing works and you're feeling stuck after years and years of study, you start to think that you just can't speak English. Maybe other people can be fluent, but you can't. You're just not good at learning languages. You can understand English, you just can't speak it. Negativity is powerful. Negative thoughts make us feel unhappy, stressed, and unsatisfied. When we focus on the negative, it often leads us to feeling afraid and ultimately to giving up. But I want you to think about those negative thoughts a little differently. Of course, there is a lot of advice online that says turn negative thoughts into positive ones. And I don't agree 100% because the truth might be that you can't speak English fluently yet. It might be true that you're not confident in English yet. It might be true that you don't have a high level of vocabulary or you can't speak like someone else does in English yet. Did you notice that key word that I used again and again, the word yet? The word yet means up to now or at this point, but it also gives us the hope and the feeling that it can change. It might change tomorrow. It might change next week. If we work on it, we can make progress. There is the opportunity to reach our goal. So what I want you to do is to start focusing on the power of yet, instead of thinking, I can't. And if you're thinking, but I don't know what to do, I don't know how to take a step or make progress. My big hint is, Follow the tips that I'm giving you today, whether it's finding a language partner, doing an activity where you listen to a podcast and then practice speaking about it. You can use the strategies in my free audio download or maybe investing in a class. And we'll talk about a few more strategies as we go, but all of those are great steps to take that mean you are beginning to practice speaking in English which will help you reach your goal of being fluent and confident. The fourth mistake that I often see is believing that you don't have time. Remember earlier in this video, I said I might give you a little bit of tough love today. And this is where I'm going to do it. I often hear people say, I really want to be fluent. I just can't find time or I don't have time. And it's true that when we want to accomplish something, we have to commit to it. We have to work on it. And that takes some of our time. It might be running a marathon, participating in a competition, learning to play the piano, joining a choir. It might be losing weight and getting fit, 
Those do require daily effort and fluency and confidence in English are the same. It does require daily effort. It requires some of your time. Now, it doesn't have to be hours of time every day. It doesn't have to take over your life. It might be five minutes on Mondays and 20 minutes on Tuesdays. But here is the tough love. Here's the truth. It's not that you don't have time or you can't find the time. The truth is you won't. You want to become fluent in English, but you won't wake up earlier than normal to do a little bit of studying. You want to be fluent in English, but you won't practice speaking with your colleague during lunch. You want to be fluent in English, but you won't make time in the evening to practice. That's the tough love. The truth is we make choices about our time and we make choices about our priorities. Now, it might be true that right now you do want to be fluent, but it's not a priority. You won't wake up earlier to do it or you won't find time in the evening. And that is absolutely okay. There's nothing right or wrong about your priorities, but it's really important to be honest about them. And here's why it's important. If we only believe that I can't, I can't find the time, then we get frustrated and upset when something doesn't work or it doesn't happen fast enough. So we start to believe that it's not possible for us, that no strategy will work for us. But that's not true. You absolutely can become confident in English. You absolutely can become fluent. But it does mean giving time every day, and it means speaking practice. It means that you are using the language. It means that you create time in your day for it. It becomes a priority. And I can tell you that the students who are most successful in English this is what makes them different. This is what they do. They find time in their day for English. They create space for it. And again, it might be five minutes on Monday while they walk the dog. On Tuesdays, maybe it's joining me for a class. And on Wednesdays, they listen to a podcast on the way to work. And then they talk about it a little bit. But every day they're doing something in English. And that is the key. And finally, mistake number five that I want you to avoid 100% is giving up. If you are making the other mistakes we've talked about, then of course you would feel discouraged and frustrated and you'll think it's just not possible. But if you give up on your goal of being fluent and confident in English, it probably means that you're giving up something more. It might mean giving up your hope for a promotion at your company, or it might mean giving up your hope for the most amazing dream job in English. It might mean giving up your goal to go study abroad, or it might be giving up the hope that you can feel comfortable in English where you live and start to make friends and communicate easily every day. And I don't want you to give up any of that. The truth is fluency is a process. It's something that happens over time. As you commit, as you take steps forward every day, that frustration begins to go away and you get stuck less and less often. You stop losing words and you start finding the words that you need when you want to say them. It becomes less scary to start a conversation with someone and to participate in a discussion at work. But all of that only happens when you do everything else we've talked about today. You start focusing on using English and you find ways to learn real English. For example, reading blogs or listening to podcasts, and then you practice talking about it. When you do that, you immediately use the grammar and vocabulary you've just learned. It means doing something every day in your English, and if necessary, investing in it 
giving yourself the opportunity to work with a teacher to participate in a class that is going to focus on your speaking. So of course, the solution to mistake number five is don't give up on your English. That's much easier to say than it is to do. Not giving up means being courageous. It might mean taking some risks. It means practicing speaking and doing it every day. But if it's your priority, if it's something you really want to accomplish, then I know you can do it. And I know that you can find time in your day for English. Now, if you're still here and listening, I'm thrilled that you are. This is a longer lesson than normal, but it also tells me you might be making one of those mistakes and you're ready to stop making it so that you can begin making progress. So here is my challenge question for you today, and you can share your answer in the comments just below the video or in the comment section of the online lesson. If you've been making one of these mistakes, if you've felt frustrated that you're doing everything you can, but maybe you're not practicing speaking, or if you're ready to try something new, then I want to know about it. I want to know what step you're going to take today and what you're going to do tomorrow to help you reach your goals in English. I would love for you to share that with me so that I can encourage you and support you in that goal. So take a couple of moments today and share that with me in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up on YouTube, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and share it on Facebook. With that, thank you so much for joining me this week, and I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday for your Confident English lesson.